Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the Anti-Aging Society. Another meeting, another day. Um, this session uh, really is about advances in anti-aging medicine and should be an exciting program. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging the society and thanking the executive uh, directorship, Doreen Brown and her team. Um, I would encourage you to speak to them. They know all about the postgraduate education programs that the society runs, which are increasingly popular and very valuable to us. And of course, my two dear friends, uh, Ron Klatz and Bob Goldman, who really are responsible for this society and founded this society many years ago. I can remember it starting in a room smaller than this, maybe two decades ago. And here we are with a very large, vibrant uh, organization. Anyway, I'll start the proceedings by uh, addressing my own remit, uh, which was an invitation by the International Association of Colon Hydrotherapists to give a lecture on digestive health from an alternative perspective. Now, uh, given my qualifications, which are a sure fire uh, example of me never having ever wanted to go to work in my life. Um, you can see that I'm always given the topics that are difficult from an evidence-based perspective. Um, and of course, my parents are penniless, having paid for my education. But um, disclosures, I have some commercial interests because I have to make a living having uh, two former wives and six children. So let's leave that alone. Um, Without efficient digestive function, and I am actually a board certified gastroenterologist in disguise, general health will not prevail. And in essence, any rumble felt in the gut or the mind uh, is a reciprocal event. So in fact, the digestive tract is very smart, being described as the second brains. Uh, let me explain a little concept I wrote about, which is kind of an interesting way of looking at anatomy. The more innovation an organ has, the more it can act with cognition and independence. So the gut has a tremendous amount of nervous tissue. In fact, there's more nervous tissue in the gastrointestinal tract than there is in the entire spinal cord, making it a very clever organ structure. So we have these uh, mind-body disorders which are reflected in what I call smart anatomic regions, the gut being the smartest. The kidneys are probably among the stupidest of organs because they have relatively little direct innovation. Now, these are aphorisms. These are not scientific facts. So you don't hear about irritable kidney syndrome. Very interesting concept. Is there an irritable heart syndrome? Yes, I believe there is. I've written about it. Now, really the most common digestive disorders are not due to cancer or inflammation. They are functional in origin. So they represent disorders of reciprocal harmony of the body, a concept proposed by Claude Bernard 150 years or more ago. Now, Please let us understand that integrative medicine and more natural approaches do relatively little to benefit what I call plumbing problems. If there is a structural problem in the digestive tract, please look to the conventional option. Now, functional digestive disease is really a, a mishmash. And I mentioned Claude Bernard, um, who in fact was a cruel vivisectionist and a failed music composer. He was also a failed playwright, which sent him to medical school, I guess a good second option. But Claude Bernard talked to us about the milieu interieur, and he talked to us about the idea of orchestration and reciprocal harmony. So if we listen to Claude Bernard, we understand these days why we're moving away from subspecialty medicine increasingly towards what people have termed, uh, I hate the word, holistic approaches to management. But functional digestive disorders actually involve the brains of the guts as well as the brains of the body. And there is a concept of visceral learning where actually you can educate the digestive tract directly. Believe me, there's a lot of evidence for that. 
And if you look at this phenomenon of functional disorders, you're looking at 75% of all gastrointestinal disorder activity in clinical practice. So about three quarters is functional in origin. And it's functional digestive disease that represents an ideal target for simple, gentle, natural options, not really the classic conventional allopathic cut, burn, and poison approach with drugs. But if you want to see um, the outcome of gentlemen who met in Rome, they developed criteria for functional digestive disease maybe 10, 15 years ago which have evolved, and if you look at the regions of the guts, you have a number of functional disorders, and of course, the most important and most common is irritable bowel syndrome, uh, followed perhaps by non-ulcer dyspepsia. So each anatomic region has its own unique group of functional disorders, which are disorders of gut mind, mind body to some degree, and failures of the reciprocal harmony as proposed by Claude Bernard. So please understand that nothing is new in medicine. Most concepts are reinvention of the wheel. But we're going to talk about some of these disorders in general relationship as we get into the idea of detoxification and its alleged evidence base. Please let me give you a caution that the American Gastro Gastroenterological Association talks about red flag symptoms. Here are some of them. But things like difficulty in swallowing, especially in an individual over the age of 45 years, is esophageal cancer until proven otherwise. So remember, things like blood in the stool um, really signify structural disorder, which requires uh, very close investigation. Any systemic symptoms associated with GI disease and very important things like weight loss, fever, joint disease, you're looking at inflammatory bowel disease here or perhaps cancer. Now, this is a summary of what I term to be alternative interventions. About 10 years ago, I wrote a book called Natural Ways to Digestive Health where I walked through the gastrointestinal tract and looked at what was rational in let's say, more natural forms of treatment. But we have really an obsession in alternative medicine with the idea of purging for health, uh, which includes a large number of colonic therapies, which will be the focus of my discussion. And I was asked to give this lecture by the president of the International Association of Colon Therapists, and we're going to focus in on that area. But these are some of the interventions without me going through each of them that are really applied um, in integrative medicine practice as complementary or a substitute for allopathic approaches. Let me start by telling you that there seems to be a detachment of the mouth going on in medicine. It's no man's land. Uh, dentists don't speak to practicing general physicians. And many people with mouth disorders are among the greatest of revolving door phenomena. Oh no, your halitosis is not due to your teeth, go see your doctor. Oh, you've got halitosis, go see your dentist. It's an ever-increasing issue. But we now know these days, especially with research over the past decade, that poor oral health spells disease. Uh, I guess the biggest issue is bacterial translocation, but we have some studies in peer-reviewed medicine now that show us a strong association between coronary artery disease, respiratory and gastrointestinal disease, with poor dental hygiene, most specifically periodontal disease. And we have some new concepts uh, that I've talked about that involve oral bio-cleansing. I developed a product uh, many years ago for use in dogs uh, and cats uh, to avoid teeth brushing where I use sticky gel containing papaya enzymes and green tea. But the idea of bio-cleansing is something that I draw to your attention and please start looking in your patient's mouths. That's the root of a lot of disease. 